G'day, Sean here, and this is a Fujifilm Eterna 55, fully accessorized with new components from Arri PCA. Let's get into the details. So here we have all of the new accessories for the Fujifilm Eterna 55. I'm gonna take you top to bottom and describe the features of our accessories before we talk about the sets, which you'll find in YouTube chapters, because there are four different sets based on recommended packages that we have for this camera. Top to bottom. Well, at the top, we have the standard CCH4 top handle. This has been around for a little while and it has slotted screw holes here so that you can slide the handle backwards and forwards to get good balance when you're using, say, an easy rig or just so it feels nice in your hand. And behind that, of course, it's compatible directly with the hex handle extensions, which have been very popular. And at the front, I'm using an RMB8 rod mounting bracket along with a viewfinder cross pipe and the VFA4. And those three parts are also available in their own set and they work really well with the screen that's included with the Eterna from Fujifilm. So here I have quite a bit more adjustment in terms of left and right adjustment and up and down than I would get with the standard Fuji top handle. And I can rotate this with a little friction adjustment in here because we have the standard viewfinder mounting interface that we've had on every Alexa since it was introduced. And because I have this nice VFA4 adapter bracket here, well, I can also undo the little screw and then slide that closed flush against the side of the camera body so that I can drop it straight into a unit bag and change locations for example. But we also support the standard Fuji top handle that comes with the camera and that's one of the reasons that we have multiple sets available. So this is Fuji's top handle here and of course that slides into the dovetail at the back of the camera but the nice thing about the Fuji top handle I wanted to mention is that they have adopted our ARRI Pinlock mounting hole standard. So you can see here this is exactly as it's described in our free document available on the website and that means that you can use any ARRI pin lock accessory directly with Fuji's handle. So thanks Fuji for joining our open source standard there. I could of course put the handle extension block directly onto Fuji's handle. Now underneath our camera handle here, well we have a top plate which slides into the dovetail mechanism on top of the camera and then clamps tight. And in front of that I have a separate NATO rail which goes on the top of the camera designed specifically for this camera, which is a great option if you just want to have a very lightweight place to mount a rod for lens motors for example, because I could take the NRC1 that I have on the side bracket of the camera now, release that and then just put that at the top here and then run a rod for lens motors. That brings me to the side brackets. We have NATO rail side brackets on the side here and many of the sets that we have include an NRC1 so that you can have a rod mounted to the side of the camera. I'm gonna put that back on the side here. And then underneath, you'll see that I have an NRC6. So this guy here is a rosette adapter for a NATO rail clamp so that I can have a hand grip on the side or an extension and a hand grip. Of course, I can use that on both the left and on the right side of the camera and I can quickly adjust the position because it's a NATO rail. At the back, we also have a side bracket. It's the rear side bracket and it also incorporates a NATO rail so that I can add something like an NRC2. That's this NATO rail clamp here, which I personally find to be a great place to put a video transmitter because it's right next to the SDI port on the back of the camera. So a nice little bracket there. Moving to the bottom. Well, it's nice to see that we have a bud compatible base plate. This is only the second time that we've incorporated that system for third party camera pro camera accessories after the Venice mini extension system. And bud is basically a system that was introduced with the Alexa 35. And it now has a whole range of plates, something like 15 plates that you can slide toollessly into the bottom of the camera. Before I show you that in more detail, I just wanted to point out that at the front of the camera here, where well, we have 15 millimeter rod support. This is an LWS7, which I can screw onto the base plate of the camera. And that gives me 15 millimeter lightweight rods at the correct height 
from the center of the lens. That is a standard that's been around for a long time. The one tricky thing with this camera is that the camera is very tall and that means that I can't actually run 15 millimeter rods underneath at the correct height. Hence why I have to have this clamp screwed into the front. Um, but it's nice you can flip the clamp upside down so that you still have room to get to the wheel at the front of the camera here. All right, before the rods, we were talking about SAM plates. I have a few examples here. Um, for example, we have the SAM 5. This is an ultra lightweight plate for the Movi Pro. And it looks very similar to the SAM 9, which was developed for the Ronin 2. So I could very quickly undo the clamp on the side of my camera here and then slide out my CSP2 shoulder pad and then directly slide in the SAM5 so that I can go straight onto a Movi. Now, of course, we have multiple options for other SAM plates, including the SAM6, which would work for the Artemis 2 and Trinity and Trinity 2 and our stabilized remote heads. You have SAM7 for the GPI Pro Rig, SAM8 designed for steady cams. SAM9 is, of course, for Ronin 2, as I mentioned. Now, this will also work with a range of the bridge plate adapters that we already have and dedicated shoulder pads like the CSP2. But we're also introducing one new bud compatible plate with this camera, and that is this guy. This is the lightweight tripod plate. So it is basically as light a plate as possible, designed with generic mounting interfaces on the bottom so that you can put any other kind of plate. Because directly, if you look at the bottom of the camera, there are no centerline mounting holes. So with this system, well, it's kind of an adapter plate for anything that you wanted to mount the camera to that will, of course, still slide backwards and forwards so that you can have adjustment for balance either on your shoulder or in whatever you're mounting the camera to. That will also ship with our version of the Touch and Go 120 plate that's been designed to mount really securely to the LTP1 and that is included in the basic sets. And speaking of sets, let's take a look at the sets now. We have four sets for the Eterna. We have the basic and the extended basic set, and then we have the pro set and the extended pro set. And the biggest difference between basic and pro is that the basic sets are designed for use with the Fujifilm top handle that comes with the camera, whereas the pro sets are designed more for our cinema style customers who would rely on an ARRI top handle and a top plate, which will give you many more mounting options than would come as stock. Now, I'm going to run you through building the basic set first. So here is what you get. You get the base plate for the camera, as well as the lightweight tripod plate, which includes the touch and go 120 plate as well. And then you get a top NATO rail, as well as the two NATO rail side brackets and an NRC1 rod clamp. That's a 19 millimeter rod clamp, as well as a 15 millimeter reduction insert. Let's start at the bottom of the camera and I can put the base plate on and I want to do it so that when I place it on you can see that there's an overhang towards the front. That's intentional so that you could put on the optional LWS7 15 millimeter lightweight rod console. That screws in. These are captive screws. You can use either a three, a four or a five millimeter hex driver to screw that in and then we have this like so. I can now slide in my lightweight tripod plate like this. And now you can see how I have a whole heap of mounting points here, which can be used for any kind of plate that you might need for a tripod or a stabilizer as well. And it gives me quite a bit of clearance for if I am using that rod uh, mounting console at the front. So it means that I can put the camera flat on a surface. On there, we can then place the other half of the LTP-1. I've got to decide which screw holes to use here. So here we have our Touch and Go 120 compatible plate. And you'll notice that there are also screw holes that run in the opposite direction to normal. So here I've screwed it in lengthways, but normally these plates don't have holes going in this orientation. And that's so that you can screw it into a side bracket like this and then mount it in a tripod so that you can use it in a 90 degree offset rotated mode for 9x16 shooting if you wish. So now we have that, I can put this the right way up and then I'm gonna add on the top NATO rail here. Now bear in mind, these are the only two screws that are not captive because we needed to keep this as thin as possible. This will screw in at the front and already I have a pretty decent rig for if I'm using this camera in a stabilizer or a gimbal because I could use say a rod console here to then just run a single rod off the front and it's very very lightweight but still adjustable with the sliding base plate system to get balance. 
and take that off for now. We've got little safety end stops on the end. Now, it's worth mentioning that the only way to use the side brackets is by first attaching the top and the bottom plates because there's no side mounting holes on the Eterna. So we have to mount the side brackets instead into the top and bottom plates. And you can see that there are two screws at the bottom and one at the top, which you want to get lined up first because it actually goes in at an angle like this. Just get that snug and then I'll do the bottom two here. And the side brackets are interchangeable. So the one on the left side of the camera is symmetrical to the one on the right. There's no left and right. And then we can put this like so. Follow the same procedure. All right, and there you have it. That is a built basic set. All I have to do now is throw on the rod clamp like so, and I can include the 15 millimeter reduction insert if I want to have a 15 mil instead of a 19 mil rod. But remember, we do recommend 19 as you get a lot more clamping force with clamps when using lens motors. So from this point, I could of course add the Fuji top handle and I can show you that nifty little cable guide that we have again. So if I pop this in like so, I can then push the cable here into the little gap between the top and the side NATO rails. Attach the second cable and now the camera is ready to go as a basic set. Now what about basic extended set? Well, I get a few more extra components. So I get that lightweight rod console that will attach to the front of the base plate. I get the rear side bracket. I get an NRC2 for video transmitters. That's another rail clamp, a uh, NATO rail clamp. And then I get two NRC6, which are rosette to NATO rail adapters, as well as the CSP1 shoulder pad. Because in this orientation, with this basic set, we're kind of assuming that people uh, only or already have access to a bunch of BUD compatible plates. But here now we're including a shoulder pad in case you don't already have one. And you get a pair of lightweight stainless steel 15 millimeter rods that are 240 millimeters in length. Okay, and now for the pro set. Well, it includes many of the same accessories as the basic sets, including the top NATO rail, the side NATO rails, that NRC1 rod clamp with 15 millimeter insert and the base plate for the bottom of the camera but it doesn't include the LTP-1, the lightweight tripod plate. Instead, in the Pro Set, you'll get a CBP-5, which has been the most popular base plate used with the Alexa 35 and the Alexa 35 Extreme. It has a very comfortable shoulder pad and a lightweight bridge plate mechanism built in so that you can drop this straight onto a dovetail plate and it's all in one part so that you can slide the whole thing back and forwards very easily to either remove it or to take uh, or to find good balance with the camera rig on your shoulder. You get all of this travel here with the plate. So I can lock that off. Now there are rod holes at the front of this for 15 millimeter lightweight and 19 millimeter studio, but please be aware when you use it like this, they won't be at the correct height from the center of the lens because again of the height of the Eterna camera, which doesn't allow us to put this plate in the correct place, which is why we have that separate solution with the LWS7 for the correct height of 15 millimeter rods. Also included in the set, you get a pair of 15 millimeter rods. You get that rear accessory bracket, which I can screw onto the back of the camera and will sit just here. And you get the NRC2, which is the NATO rail clamp for video transmitters that goes onto that rear bracket. And I'll show you now how to put on the top plate and then of course the top handle. We still use the mechanism for the dovetail system that's at the top of the camera. So I can slide the plate in just like that. And then we can tighten the clamp that's within the plate itself with these two screws. You only need about half a turn uh, in order to clamp it or unclamp it. And now we have a very flat surface that's flush here with the NATO rail bracket at the front too, um, so that I could mount a top handle or any other accessories or rig this in low mode on a steady cam or something like that. Now I can put my top handle on, which again is the CCH4, and I'm gonna use that uh, hole up there in the NATO rail top plate. And I've just started the screws and you can see that sliding mechanism that I mentioned before, again, really useful for finding good balance. And when you have the place that you want it, you can just drop the driver in through one of the screw holes in the top and they will all line up with the ones for the screws. Okay, there we have the top plate. Now, 
to add the screen here for the Fuji camera, you can just use the existing bracket that ships with the Eterna because it also uses ARRI pin lock mounting interface here, which will go straight into the front of the top handle. And of course, if you would prefer, then you could pick up an RMB8, which is this guy, which will screw into the front of that CCH4 top handle as well. And then I can slide in the viewfinder cross pipe and lock that off, put the little safety stopper on at the end, like so, and then I have a place here to mount the screen if I so desire. Now, what do you get if you get the Pro Extended Set? Well, that's the option for maybe rental houses or owner operators who want all of the accessories and would prefer not to have the CPP5, but instead go with the two other options. So that goes to the side. And then we would have the LTP1 lightweight tripod plate. Let me do a nice little flat, way, flat lay here for you. You get the CSP2 shoulder pad. No rod mounting option on that one. Instead, we supply the LWS7, which will screw into the front here of the base plate. And you get the same rear side brackets, the rods, and you also get two NRC6s because these have rosettes that would otherwise have been on the CVP5, but now I can slide these in like this, lock it off, and I have a rosette on the side of the camera for mounting top handles, uh, top handles, hand grips. All right, that is the four sets for the Fujifilm Eterna 55. If you have any questions, please throw them down in the comments below. I should also not forget to mention that all of these components are available individually. So if you'd like some help for configuration, then please also leave a comment down below. All right, catch you next time.